In this video, I will answer 10 selected questions on permutations. Watch to the end and see how the solutions to the questions are gotten. The first question says, evaluate n permutation n. Generally, n permutation arrow is equal to n factorial over n minus arrow factorial. So, n permutation n will now be this. In place of arrow, we'll put n, right? That's n factorial over n minus n factorial. That is n factorial all over. n minus n is zero. So we have zero factorial. Take note, zero factorial is one. n factorial over one, which is what n factorial. So the correct option is option B. This is the second question. Evaluate 10 permutation four. Going by this same formula that we used here, 10 permutation four is equal to 10 factorial all over 10 minus four factorial. So we have 10 factorial all over what? Six factorial. Okay, let's simplify. This is 10 times nine times eight times seven times six factorial. I am stopping at six factorial because there is a six factorial at the bottom that we cancel it. So this is now equal to 10 times nine times eight times seven. And what would that be? 5,040. So 10 permutation four is 5,040. And that we can see in option A. All right, this is question three. It says, find n comma arrow if n permutation arrow is equal to 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times nine. n permutation arrow is equal to what? 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times nine. Okay, so I want to see if I can write this as a permutation. 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. If I multiply the top by 8 factorial, it means that everything here is 13 factorial. So if I multiply the top by 8 factorial, I should also divide by what? 8 factorial. Okay, so that the 8 factorial can also cancel the 8 factorial. We'll not be having what we had initially. And what you can see here is simply 13 factorial over 8 factorial. Because 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 factorial is 13 factorial. At the bottom, we have 8 factorial. Now, how do we write 13 factorial over 8 factorial as a permutation of n items taking arrow at a time? Okay. Now, this is it. Generally, n permutation arrow is n factorial all over what? n minus arrow factorial. So let me write 13 factorial over 8 factorial like this. It will now be 13 factorial all over 13 minus, what will I subtract from 13 to give me 8? That's 5. I hope you get this. So 8 factorial is 13 minus 5 factorial. That means 13 factorial all over 13 minus 5 factorial is the same thing as saying 13 permutation 5. This is it. Compare. N is 13. Arrow is 5. So this is 13 permutation 5. That means N is 13. Arrow is what? 5. And this we can see as option A. N is 13. That's the first one. Then arrow is what? 5. So option A is the correct option. Similar to question three is what we have in question four. We have to find n an arrow if n permutation arrow is equal to 15 factorial all over seven factorial. So it's simple. 15 factorial all over seven factorial is equal to this. 
15 factorial all over. I can write 7 factorial as 15 minus 8 factorial. N permutation arrow is N factorial over N minus arrow factorial. So if we compare this and this, N is 15, arrow is 8. So it means that 15 factorial over 15 minus 8 factorial is the same thing as saying 15 permutation 8. In this case, N is 15, arrow is equal to what? 8. So option C is the correct option. All right, question five. How many ways can the word greater be arranged? It's straightforward, without any condition. How many ways can the word greater be arranged? G R E A T E R O. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven letters in this word. That one means seven factorial. Okay? Obviously, I'm going to divide by something. I can see that E, letter E, is repeated two times. I will divide by two factorial. Also, arrow is repeated two times. Divide by two factorial. So this is the number of ways of arranging the word greater without any condition. So this is it. And I can see this in option A. Question 6 says, how many ways can the word calculus be arranged? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 letters in that word. That one means 8 factorial. Now, I can see some letters that are repeated. Letter C is repeated twice. Letter L is repeated twice. Letter U is repeated twice also. So, what I'll do is to divide this 8 factorial by 2 factorial for the 2 repeated C, 2 factorial for the 2 repeated L, and 2 factorial for the 2 repeated U. That's all. I can see this in option B. Question 7 says, how many three-digit numbers can be formed using the digits 4, 5, and 6 if no repetitions are allowed? What we are doing here is all about arrangement. That is, the number of ways of arranging these three numbers to form three digit numbers without repeating any of the numbers here. That is what the question is asking, okay? So, three digit numbers, we have hundred, tens, and units. The first number here, which is the hundred, can be filled in three ways. Either six enters, or five enters, or four enter. Whichever one enters, we have three ways, or three options, okay? That's three. Now, the second digit, which is the tenth digit, has just two options. So, out of the three, we now have two options that can fill the second digit, which is two ways. The last digit, has just one way it can be filled okay we've taken one here we took another one here is remaining one so whichever one that we fill it it can only be filled in one way that is the point so the total number of ways of arranging these three numbers to form three digit numbers each where there is no repetition of the numbers is 3 times 2 times 1 way, and that's 6 ways. This means that 6 3-digit numbers can be formed using these digits without repetition. So I can see this in option D. Question 8 says, how many 3-digit numbers can be formed using the digits 4, 5, and 6? if any digit can be used more than once. Here, repetitions are allowed, okay? We are forming three digit numbers. Hundred tens and the units. The condition is that 
Any digits can be used more than once, okay? So we can have something like this, 444, 555, 445, and so on and so forth, okay? The first position or the first digit, which is the 100 position, has three options. Any of them can enter. That's in three ways. The second one also has three ways because the question says that any digit can be used more than once. So the first position has three options. The second digit also has three options. As well, the third digit has three options. So three options for the hundred, three options for the tens, three options for the unit. So we have 27 ways of arranging these numbers to form three digit numbers where repetitions are allowed. Okay, 27 is not in the option, so the answer is none of the above. Option E. Question 9 says, from the word pencil, how many ways can it be arranged by starting with the letter E and ending with the letter P? So what we are concerned about is to determine the number of ways that this word pencil can be arranged if it must always begin with E and end with P. That is what the question is saying. The other letters in the word are N, C, I, and L. N, C, I, L. So as it is, E and P are fixed. So what we should be concerned about is the arrangement of these other ones that are here. Okay, N, C, I, and L. So these other ones, these other letters here, they are four in number. They can be arranged in four factorial ways. And that's four times three times two times one, which is 24 ways. And this option is in what? Option A. Now, this is the last one here. We have to evaluate N minus one permutation arrow minus one. It's quite a cheap question. By permutation, we have n permutation arrow, which is the permutation of n objects taking arrow at a time. It's n factorial over n minus arrow factorial. That is to say, n minus one permutation arrow minus one, n minus one permutation arrow minus one will be equal to n minus one factorial all over n minus 1 minus r minus 1. n minus 1 minus r minus 1 factorial. n minus 1 factorial all over the minus we enter to give minus r plus 1. Okay? Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So what's left in this bracket is just n minus r n minus arrow factorial. This is it. So n minus 1 permutation arrow minus 1 is n minus 1 factorial divided by n minus arrow factorial. All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Keep supporting by subscribing, like, and share the video to your friends and to your classmates.